All right, in this video, we're going to see how to draw a position versus time graph from a velocity graph. Now, part of this involves understanding displacement and how to find it from a velocity graph. So if you don't understand that, you should probably go back and watch that video first. But nevertheless, let's get started. So this up here is a velocity versus time graph, and there are some very abrupt changes to velocity. Like you suddenly go from moving positive 2 meters per second to negative 2 instantly. It's not really possible, but we're just going to assume for the purposes of this problem that it is. So let's look at the first question. When is this object at rest? So an object is at rest when its velocity is 0 meters per second, and there's really no time in this graph um, when it's at rest. It starts off going 2, and then it's going negative 2, and then it's going positive 1, and then it's going negative 1. So there's really no period where it's at rest, so the answer is it's never at rest. When is it moving to the right? Typically, we think of moving to the right as when it has a positive velocity. So it has a positive velocity during the A region, which includes 0 to 5 seconds. It has a positive velocity during C, which is from 10 to 15 seconds. When is it moving to the left? Just whenever it has a negative velocity, so in segment B, which includes from 5 to 10 seconds, and segment D, which is from 15 to 20. When is it moving the fastest? So moving the fastest means the largest magnitude. So it doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. Um, the question is just what is the largest number? So the greatest number from zero. So at A, it's moving positive two meters per second. At B, it's moving negative two. C, it's positive one. D, it's negative one. So sections A and B are when it's moving the fastest. Now, how far did the object travel in total? So this is where we really have to make use of our displacement understanding. So if this object is traveling at two meters per second for a total of five seconds, how far does it go? So if you're going two meters per second for five seconds, hopefully you realize that that is 10 meters, which is basically the area of this rectangle. If you go back to that video, we can see that. So this travels 10 meters in this time period. Then down here, we do the same thing. We are going negative 2 for 5 seconds, so 2 times 5 is also 10. This is also going to travel 10 meters. The difference is it's in the negative direction, so we'll say it's negative 10. Up here, we're traveling 1 meter per second for 5, from 10 to 15. So this is going to go positive 5 meters. Then down here, it's going to go negative 1 for 5 seconds, so negative 5 meters. Now, this is not asking about displacement, it's talking about total distance traveled. So when you find distance traveled, you don't look at the negatives and positives, you just add up the, the total of the actual numbers. So 10 plus 10, we ignore the negative, plus 5 plus 5 is a total of 30 meters traveled. Now, as far as displacement goes, you do count the negatives. So 10 plus negative 10 is 0, 5 plus negative 5 is 0. So the object doesn't go anywhere, it ends up back where it started, which is the same as G. It's saying, okay, we're back where we started. Now the trickiest part, let's make a position versus time graph. <clears throat> so I'm given this graph, and the axis, this is not a great um, scale. So they're telling us this is 10 seconds, this is 20 seconds. So basically every box along the horizontal is 2 seconds, which is lovely when we have 5, 10, 15. So I'm just going to mark right about here. That's 5 seconds, and 15 is right about here. So those are the important points. And then let's figure out where this goes. So we're making an assumption that we're starting at the origin. I don't think this actually tells us that, but let's assume we are. So during the first 5 seconds, we said it traveled 10 meters. So if we're calling this 5 seconds, then we're going to go to here at 10 meters. So then we're just going to draw a straight line connecting. This is our position graph. It has a positive velocity. The slope, if you were to calculate it, is 10 divided by 5, which is 2. So that is the position graph to get us started. Then in part B, it goes negative 10 meters, and that's at 10 seconds. So at 5 seconds, we move forward 10 meters. Now we're going to go back negative 10 meters, so we're just going to do this. So we're going to go back to our original position. So this is our position graph so far. And then the next segment, we're going to go positive 5 meters again. So if I go over 5 seconds to here and go up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now this is another one that's annoying. These boxes represent 2, so 5 meters is about here. So it's going to go up to about here. This is at time, so again, this is time 5, time 10, 5, 15, time 20. So 
it's going to go up to about here. Notice the slope's not as steep, so it's going slower, which is what we see on here. And then we go negative 5, it goes just back to this position. So this is sort of how you draw the position versus time graph. You're just plotting how far this goes in this period of time. So again, in 5 seconds, it went 10 meters, so we went 5 and then up 10. And then the next 5 seconds, it went down 10 meters, so then we just went back down. And so you're just kind of drawing this out. And if the velocities are constant, these will all be straight lines. So this is a position graph as drawn from a velocity graph. We're not going to have to do too many of these, but it's good to get a little bit of practice, try it out. So using this as a guide, try to do problem four on the worksheet. Um, see how that goes. Um, and we'll talk about it next class. Until next time, I am Derek Genova. Have a delightful day.